picture on my mirror Start to blush when somebody says your name In my stomach there's a pain You walk in my direction I go the other way Welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Kaylin and we are back with another video. Today's video is all about my February TBR. So this video is going to be themed since February is the month of love. We are showing and going through my love stack for the month. So these are books that I hope to get through for February. If I can't get through them, I might do like a little TBR jar and like pick from it so I can pick which ones I, I actually read um, throughout the month. But I have some other books that I want to read and I'm a mood reader so I, I really wanted to do a TBR jar picks my February TBR but I just can't do it because the way I'm feeling is like once I'm done a book I'm like in a totally different mood or I want to keep doing that so like the TBR jar is not going to work for me because I don't want to read what it's going to tell me to read I want to read what I want to read and what I'm in the mood to read this month so I'm also trying to be intentional about reading you know really good books for Black History Month and or just by black authors just to one find some more that I like and then to read about you know some things that will help me just appreciate like black history and everything like that so I'm going to show you guys the love stack now I have seven books so I was sitting and I was thinking and I was like what can I read what how can I theme the month and you know it's February it's the month of love Valentine's Day and it's also Black History Month so I wanted to pick some good reads and I wanted there to be books that I want to read that I've been putting off and then I found some new books y'all excuse me if I like sniffle or anything my allergy medicine has not kicked in yet and your girl's allergic to everything. I decided to find all the books that I own that have the word love in the title. This is the stack. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven books. I believe, oops, I believe three are by black authors. One is an Indian author. So try to like diversify it too. The first book is going to be The Love Hypothesis. This is by Allie Hazelwood. As a third year PhD candidate, Olive Smith doesn't believe in lasting romantic relationships but her best friend does and that's what got her into the situation convincing what and on i don't know how you say that that olive is dating and well on her way to a happily ever after was always going to take more than hand wavy jedi mind tricks scientists require proof so like any self-respecting biologist olive panics and kisses the first man she chooses that man is none other than the adam carlson a young hotshot professor and well-known ass which is why olive is positively floored when Stanford's reigning lab tyrant agrees to keep her charade a secret and be her fake boyfriend. And when a big science conference goes haywire, putting Olive's career on the Bunsen burner, Adam surprises her again with his unyielding support and even more unyielding six-pack abs. Suddenly their little experiment feels dangerously close to combustion and Olive discovers that the only thing more complicated than a hypothesis on love is putting her own heart under the microscope. So this is long overdue. We already talked about how I need to read something from Allie Hazelwood. So we're reading this this month. And you know her other book has love in it too. So we're reading Love Theoretically as well. And this one is The Many Lives of Theoretical Physicist Elsie Hannaway have finally caught up with her. By day she's an adjunct professor toiling away at grading labs and teaching thermodynamics in hopes of landing tenure. By other day Elsie makes up for her non-existent paycheck by offering her services as a fake girlfriend, tapping into her expertly honed people pleasing skills to embody whichever version of herself the client needs. Honestly, it's a pretty sweet gig until her carefully constructed Elsie verse comes crashing down. Because Jack Smith, the annoying, attractive, and arrogant older brother of her favorite client, turns out to be cold-hearted, experimental physicist who ruined her mentor's career and undermined the reputation of theorists everywhere. And he's the same Jack Smith who rules over the physics department at MIT, dating right between Elsie and her dream job. Elsie's prepared for an all-out war of scholarly sabotage, but those long penetrating looks not having to be anything other than her true self when she's with him will falling into an experimentalist orbit finally tempt her to put her most guarded theories on love into practice so we are finally gonna see what everyone's talking about because everyone's always talking about how they love her writing and 
so forth and so on. Another one is Love in Other Words by Christina Lauren. And it took me a while to realize this is two different people that write the book together, which is nice. Oh wow, these words are so big. I never cracked it open. This is one of the books that I have on my shelf that is just like, why haven't you read it by now? Like, I just don't understand. Everyone raves about it. I only hear good things, but yet it's just sitting on my shelf. So Love in Other Words is going to be another book that we read this month. Macy Sorensen is settling into an ambitious if emotionally tepid routine. Work hard as a new pediatrics resident, plan her wedding to an older financially secure man, keep her head down and heart tucked away. But when she runs into Elliot Petropolis, the first and only love of her life, the careful bubble she's constructed begins to dissolve. Once upon a time, Elliot was Macy's entire world, growing from her gangly bookish friend into the man who coaxed her heart open again, only to break it on the very night he declared his love for her. Told in alternating timelines between then and now, teenage Elliot and Macy grow from friends to much more, spending weekends and lazy summers together in a house outside San Francisco, devouring books, sharing favorite words, and talking through their growing pains and triumphs. As adults, they have become strangers to one another until their chance reunion. Although their memories are obscured by the agony of what happened that night so many years ago, Elliot will come to understand the truth behind Macy's decade-long silence and will have to overcome the past and himself to revive her faith in the possibility of an all-consuming love. I read this back a while ago and I don't know why I haven't picked this up but I'm excited and it doesn't seem like it's gonna take very long to read so I'm excited to add this on to this month so next we have Jasmine Guillory drunk on love ignore this I still have to get this sticker off the rest of it off I hate that they put stickers on books but Jasmine Guillory is one of my favorite black authors I've read a couple of her books um so this one is Margot Noble needs some relief from the stress of running the family winery with her brother. Enter Luke, sexy, charming, and best of all in the too small world of Napa, a stranger. The chemistry between them is undeniable and Margot is delighted that she lucked into the perfect one night stand she'll never see again. That is until the winery's newest hire, Luke, walks in the next morning. Margot was determined to keep things purely professional, but when their every interaction reminds her of the attraction still bubbling between them, it proves to be much more challenging than she expected. Luke Williams had it all, but when he quits his high salary tech job in Silicon Valley, in a blaze of burnout and moves back to Napa to help a friend, he realizes he doesn't want to tell the world or his mom why he's now working at a winery. His mom loves bragging about her successful son. How can he admit that the job she's so proud of broke him? Luke has no idea what is next for him, but one thing is certain. He wants more from the incredibly smart and sexy woman he hooked up with, even after she learns she's his new boss. But even if they can find a way to be together, that wouldn't be an ethical nightmare. Would such a successful woman really want a tech world dropout? Set against the backdrop of Napa Valley wine country. Nothing goes to your head as fast as a taste of love even if it means changing all of your plans. So one, can we get into the cover because the cover is gorgeous. I've always wanted to go to Napa and go like wine tasting so I'm excited to get into this world. Next we have Love Radio and this is by Ebony Liddell. I've had this for a long time. I don't even remember when I got it but this is a young adult romance so Prince Jones is the guy with all the answers or so it seems. After all at 17 he has his own segment on Detroit's popular hip-hop show Love Radio where he dishes out advice to the brokenhearted. Prince has always dreamed of becoming a DJ and falling in love but being the main caretaker for his mother who has multiple sclerosis and his little brother means his dreams will stay just that and the only romances in his life are the ones he hears about from his listeners until he meets Danny Ford. Danny isn't checking for anybody. She's focused on her plan a senior year, scores scholarship, and moved to New York City to become a famous author. But her college essay keeps tripping her up and acknowledging what's blocking her means dealing with what happened at that party a few months ago. And that's one thing Danny can't do. When the romantic DJ meets the ambitious writer, sparks fly. Prince is smitten, but Danny's not looking to get derailed. She gives Prince just three dates to convince her that he's worth falling for. Three dates for the love expert to take his own advice and just maybe change two lives forever. This sounds like the perfect like Valentine day read like love season this sounds so cute but it sounds like it's also gonna have like some real parts that I like so I'm excited to get into this I don't know why I never read this either you know why because we were waiting for a time like this 
a time like this. So next is Love is a Revolution by Renee Watson. I found this on Amazon. I was looking up a bunch of books on Pinterest and Google just to find like black authors and books for Black History Month and this is one that I was like oh this would be cute. I think it's a young adult. This is Love is a Revolution and I just want to like can we please? The cover is beautiful. When Nala Robertson reluctantly agrees to attend an open mic night for her cousin's sister friend Imani's birthday, she finds herself falling in instant love with Ty Brown, the MC. He's perfect, except Ty is an activist and is spending the summer putting on events for the community when Nala would rather watch movies and try out the new seasonal flavors at the local creamery. To impress Ty, Nala tells a few tiny lies. When the two spend more time together sharing more of themselves, some of those lies get harder to sustain. As Nala falls deeper into keeping up with her lies and into love and as she fights for her relationship with Imani too, she'll learn all the ways love is hard and how self-love is revolutionary. From New York Times bestselling and award-winning author Renee Watson comes a gorgeous story about showing radical love to the people in your life including yourself. So it just seemed really cute, something different and then this is also just a new author that I've never read and the words are pretty big so it seems like this is not going to be something that takes too long but I was like this would be a cute addition and then last but not least we have 30 things I love about myself by Radhika Sang Sangani Sangani I don't know how you say her last name when Nina's life hits rock bottom she decides to change her stars by falling in love with herself Nina mystery didn't plan to spend her 30th birthday in jail yet here she is in her pajamas locked in a holding cell there's no wi-fi no wine no carbs and no one to celebrate with unfortunately this gives Nina plenty of time to reflect on how screwed up her life is. She's just broken up with her fiance and now has to move back into her childhood home to live with her depressed older brother and their uptight traditional Indian mother. Nina's career as a freelance journalist isn't going in the direction she wants and all her friends are too busy being successful to hang out with her. Just as Nina falls into despair, a book lands in her cell. How to love yourself. It must be destiny. With literally nothing left to lose, Nina makes a life-changing decision to embark on a self-love journey. By her next Next birthday she's going to find 30 things she loves about herself so I thought this would be a cute addition because yes Valentine's Day the romances and the couples and all that kind of stuff but we have to learn to love ourselves and we have to love on ourselves every day all the time and if we don't love ourselves how can we expect other people to love us so I thought this would be a cute read we need to love on ourselves even though it's nice to have others love on us too but the last book that I want to share with you guys is one that I'm currently reading I think is perfect for um just black history month and this is actually called we are not like them this is another one that i found when i was searching like black history month black authors popular books like that so this is by christine bride and joe piazza this is a powerful story about friendship, race, love, forgiveness, and justice and the stunning ways they intersect. Jen and Riley have been best friends since kindergarten. As adults, they remain as close as sisters, but the deep bond they share is severely tested when Jen's husband, a city police officer, is involved in the shooting of an unarmed black teenager. Six months pregnant, Jen is in a free fall as her future, her husband's freedom, and her friendship with Riley are thrown into uncertainty. As a television journalist covering the story, Riley wrestles with the implications of this tragic incident for her black community her ambitions and her relationship with her lifelong friend so I saw this and I looked it up on Goodreads it's rated very well it's like a dual POV and it goes through the timeline of the whole situation from both characters point of view so you see both races and like you know the wife with her husband being involved in this and then Riley is Jen's friend and it's like how is that gonna work with their relationship like I was just like whoa I want to read this and I want to see like what it is that they they do like how do they navigate this because I don't know I, I don't know both sides of a situation like this and how that would play out so this I started I'm not too far in I'm only on like chapter two but it's really good so far so I wanted to share this in case anyone else wanted to read for this month of the future months the time we live in is a very real topic so I was like ooh, that is my love stack plus a little extra for you this month so i hope that you guys enjoyed this video don't forget to like comment and subscribe and i will see you guys in the next one bye guys the reason why